At the training, am I going to learn how to teach? Well, certainly, it's, it, this is a lifelong process. Uh, but essentially, you're going to learn. You're going to, if you're, if you're beginning your your exploration of this subject, is because you have some kind of soul connection to these teachings, and you want to learn how to essentially activate that connection. So the the first order of business is to, is to explore the connection you and your personality have with this energy field, and then to learn how to uh, share that experience. That's essentially teaching a class. So there's beginning teachers and there are advanced teachers, and they're all following the exact same kind of protocol. So a pilot on an aircraft is following the exact same steps, beginning pilot, pilot or an advanced pilot. But if you're attracted to this type of training, you have more than likely done this in a previous life, so there's some kind of inner knowing. So this essentially is how to activate that. But give you the formal step-by-step -step protocols of how to essentially open up a space inside the Kundalini realm. And this type of training, this type of experience is wanted, desired by more and more people as we plan to become more and more computerized, essentially to live comfortably with the increasing psychic, mental, physical pressure of all the information. You need to move the energy of the body and the energy of the mind differently than you did before. So that's why we want to train teachers, people who can teach others how to have this experience of being successful, comfortable, healthy, happy inside the new Aquarian computerized global landscape. Hi, Reality Riffing. I sat down with Corey Good. Uh, if you don't know him, I don't know what you've been doing with your life. Uh, he was recruited at the age of six through the military abduction um, programs for his intuitive empath abilities. Fascinating story there. Um, and he goes kind of deeply into how that, uh, that all uh, happens and happens um, in a very pragmatic way. I mean, it, that, I think that's one of the most interesting things about Corey is that he has been to Mars and he's been uh, he was in these secret space programs um, doing all sorts of things and he really describes the kind of infrastructure and also how it works um, how the memories are cleared and some of the abduction uh, both the abduction disinformation and information um, he's a human type intuitive empath to the Earth delicate seat at the ET Super Federation Council. If you don't know what that means, you should listen to this conversation. Uh, it was riveting, and I really think Corey is one of the deepest people I have interviewed in terms of exopolitics and what's happening in the a relationship with extraterrestrials, disclosure, and where we're headed at the future of planet Earth. I hope you enjoy. Hello, Rama Festival and Reality Riffing. I am so excited to be sitting down with the incredible Corey Good. He was recruited at the age of six uh, through the military abduction programs for his intuitive empath abilities and has a very um, interesting story of how that kind of has unfolded um, and ultimately is uh, doing great work on this planet, helping to um, disclose some of these uh, uh, truths and helping the earth to 
ascend to different frequencies so that we can handle some of these truths. And Corey, I, I want to not bore you, and I certainly don't want to um, make you rehash your story, but, you know, just a little whatever interests you about what, you know, to, to kind of contextualize some of the work that you're doing now, what we would love to hear. Yeah, sure. Um, for those that don't know, that was a pretty good summary. I was brought into um, special programs pretty much against my will when I was a child. They trained me to serve 20 years in a secret space program where I ended up having access to all different types of beings, but also more importantly, information, databases of information. And I combed through that quite a bit during my time there. But afterwards, I was um, sort of recruited by these higher density beings called the Blue Avians. And they approached me to try to help, you know, according to them, there was about to be a great solar event that was going to occur. They happened every 12,500, 13,000 years. We're due for one. And back in, before the last one, they went to Enoch and tried to bring information that would affect the mass consciousness to make the transition, you know, a little bit more palatable or easier. And they're basically delivering information to me that they want me to, to deliver to the masses to just make it a part of the mass consciousness. People don't have to believe it. It's, it's not really important. It's, they just have to absorb it. So on, you know, because of the times we're in a technological mass media civilization, these beings are wanting me to bring these uh, topics of, you know, oneness, service to others, um, and information about alien species and the secret space programs to the masses through multimedia. So, yeah. you know, we're doing a, I mean, we're hitting it from all angles. We're doing a graphic novel that is in the works to be turned into a scripted series with some really big A-list actors who are also white hats, light warriors, yeah. that want to help expand the consciousness. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, we have the graphic novel and then that scripted series. Um, Jenny McCarthy and I are about to next month announce a new show we're doing together. She's going to host. And, um, you know, a lot uh, of the disclosure movement has been kind of torn apart over the last several years. Yeah. And no one's talking about full disclosure, you know, learning all the truths. People are pretty happy with the partial disclosures that are starting to unfold. And uh, never in the last five years would I have thought that Jenny McCarthy was going to be the one that moves in to help save the uh, full disclosure narrative to try to get all the information out there. Um, I know, fascinating. Really I mean, I saw I saw you on her show, and um, I didn't know. I mean, you know, you just never know. This is part of what's um, happening right now. It's amazing. Um, if you didn't recognize her and just happened to meet her at an event, she would totally fit in with the community. She she practices right. Uh, Reiki and she does a, uh, a lot of very interesting practices yeah. and she knows about the esoteric community inside and out so she's been studying it pretty uh, closely. Fascinating. Well, I, I was going to say just uh, to, this is my opinion, but maybe you would not see it as accurate, but some of the ways that um, these types, you know, not I'm not saying Jenny McCarthy, but some of these kind of um, groomed younger, when these younger um, uh, people get groomed for Hollywood and uh, different types of kind of programming, we could, whatever you want to call it, MK Ultra. it's similar with a, a little bit of, uh, in terms of how you were picked and groomed for these secret space programs. Am I wrong about that? Um, so there are similarities. Yeah, yeah. there are definitely similarities, but uh, my experience was um, a real coordinated military type of um, operation experience. The experience that most of these people deal with in Hollywood is more of a a dark spiritual kind of right. occult right. kind of 
thing. And there's a, there's a pretty big difference. There is crossover, though. There is crossover. I mean, yeah. and, and not that the same, <clears throat> the same thing is happening, but that these, I think that just for those listening, that this this happens across the board, depending on, you know, where you're, you know, when, when you're recognized to have certain kind of... Um, capabilities there you know you can be sent to different these different things you know you absolutely can if you pop up on the wrong radar yeah you can yeah. find yourself uh, manipulated and shuffled into a special school program or wherever they want you to you know be able to take advantage of you yeah yeah um and do you uh do you think are you are you aware of why they picked you? I heard you talk about your grandfather and some of the mm-hmm. kind of uh, ep- genetics of, of maybe why they picked you, but are there other things? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, they look not only for people who have abilities. Uh, in my case, um, my grandfather was a conscientious objector during World War II. He was a Seventh-day Adventist. So they allowed him to go into a program to where they were basically testing diseases and cures on him that soldiers were running into on the battlefield. And uh, little did he know that they were injecting him with viruses that were making changes to his genetic code. And that's back in the 40s. That's before the 50s and the era of genetics, right? Well, you know, the government's working with extraterrestrials and they're trying to uh, develop latent abilities, um, you know, in my case, in intuition um, and uh, being an empath. And they were able to in, uh, uh, increase the chances of that gene being turned on in me. And then they studied and followed our bloodline until they saw one of us that popped, um, you know, that tested, you know, as being usable. Now, most of the people that have these latent abilities that they're able to access even a little bit, most of these people are what, the, what you would call star seeds. They're um, ET souls that came here to perform certain missions. And of course, the, the, law, the laws of the land, when they arrive, they forget who they are, but they go through the process of rediscovering their mission. And uh, they try to find a lot of these star seeds and basically, it's kind of like the dark side going and finding someone that has special abilities and trying to pull them over to the dark side to, to use them. Um, you know, they, they try to traumatize and uh, manipulate star seeds into, you know, going off of their path and being an asset. Right, right. Um, when you did, you, were you actually jumped to Mars during this uh, time? was brought to Mars on a number of occasions, usually through a craft. And uh, we were brought to, uh, in this one particular time, I was brought to a Mars base where we were surrounded with security. Um, some of the technology they use interfaces with our consciousness. That's how you operate it. You sit down and you put your hands on two metal plates or two metal bars, you grab them, and then you just think your way through the process. And for them to go in and work on these machines they needed intuitive empaths who who had con- serious control and could take the machine through the paces and they would have us sit there and operate the machines while they would diagnose them and work on them um but uh yeah on this occasion i went to a mars base that uh um was pretty much a corporate base and mm-hmm. they have lots of corporate bases there with hundreds of thousands of people who are slaves and in many cases they believe that earth was destroyed in some sort of a nuclear war in the 80s there's nowhere to go back to they believe wow um and just for the sake of the audience i know you've talked about this but the they uh, there was also some sort of age regression in terms of like time space to be back in this timeline yeah i mean if you can travel through space at the speed of light and beyond, then you're traveling through time. You know, when you're traveling through space, you're traveling through time. And these beings and people in our uh, secret programs have learned how to manipulate time. Time, you know, is, is local to a planet, local to a spaceship, and you can control the flow of time um, and go back and forward 
in time to a certain degree uh, forward. But what they were doing is they were uh, pulling us out of this little time bubble flowing on Earth out into a larger uh, galactic galactic sort of time bubble flow. So we're no longer in this time bubble. Mm-hmm. And then we're working with all of these other beings and other people on, on this uh, joint agenda. And after 20 years of being in this separate bubble, they take you and then they put you back in time 20 years to the time that you were um, taken to, to serve. And then they do a pharmaceutical means of regressing your gen, uh, your age uh, genetically. Um, and it takes about two weeks. You're basically in a chemical coma, strapped down. You're not supposed to move. And there's a cocktail of chemicals they put through your body. And then they do certain frequency pulses in a field and they can dial your age back and they can do it very precisely. And then they do what they call blank slating. They give you injections and uh, use uh, electronic methods of uh, erasing memories. And uh, then they do a last briefing to make sure that all the memories were erased. And then they reinsert you into your life, you know, within an hour or so of when they took you and deployed you. And uh, were you just kind of like the the um, thing that went wrong because you didn't you 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 were able to remember? I mean, is that basically? Well, uh, they say about three to five percent of the intuitive empaths end up getting either a partial or mostly full recall, but it's all jumbled up. Right. And the reason is is that you know um, the Akashic records are basically like the cloud. You know, how can you remember experiences from a prior life when those actual uh, memory cells were not created in your brain to access? Well, you have to be accessing them from somewhere else. So those experiences are recorded in this Akashic record. And certain people, when they have their hard drives erased, they have the natural ability to start pulling for uh, pulling a backup of the missing information from the cloud or the Akashic records and three to 5% of the intuitive impasse would get, you know, 30, 50, 70% of their memories back. And they had to be, you know, watched. Right. Right. Do you, I mean, with this partial disclosure, that's very, that's now being, you know, touted on MSNBC and all, uh, what level do you feel that this is a disinformation campaign? Where do you feel it's fitting into to full disclosure? Can you give us a little kind of lay of the land? Well, all of these, if you want to call them powers that be, powers that were, whatever you're comfortable with, they decided that... Uh, it would be terribly irresponsible to give us the whole truth all at once. It would just destroy civilization, society, you know, poor little us, we can't handle it. So what they think they're going to do is unroll the truth over 20, 50 years, give you certain foundational pieces over time and then build on them in a way that whatever bandwidth you are, uh, you know, uh, mentally, Mm-hmm. Uh, on the planet that you will be able to handle it and that it's going to be a smooth transition. That's that's their uh, rationalization of, of what they're going to do. And the people in the secret space program, you know, there have been so many crimes against humanity to keep the secrets. There's a human slave trade. There's all kinds of horrible things going on. Yeah. They want full disclosure to occur and they know it will be very rough uh, for society, but... Uh, you know, we need to address these things if we want to get out of this cycle that we call the human condition. Yeah. And are some of the vaccines that are now being um, experimented on, are these t- the types of vaccines that they were using to genetically modify? Or is this just a, a not even kind of... You know, I, I don't know, but the ties that I've seen uh, worry me that it's more of an agenda to, you know... Uh, for population control, right. uh, with the people I've seen involved, 
Um, you know, I worked for a pharmaceutical company for two years, and they were like the third largest producer of flu vaccines. And I did computer work. I was uh, doing desktop support, and I stopped where the bioengineers were one day, and I, they were real talkative that day. And so I was asking them, do you give your children these vaccines? And they were like, hell no. They were laughing. And they said, do you realize what's in there? They said, there's insect DNA, there's fetal material, there's this, there's that. And they said, on top of all of that, the way it's mass produced, the purity level is lower than that of uh, uh, vet veterinarian uh, pharmaceuticals. Right. And they said there was no way they would give them to their children. And it was at that point that I was like, okay, no, nothing for my, my children. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I saw, it, it, I saw you talking a little bit about this, but I'm curious what your take on what's happening. Just, you know, I mean, the, there's some of a theory that these uh, certain types of bioweapons viruses are being released in, you know, by kind of timeline wars or temporal wars, or um, I know you, you uh, talk a lot to Dr. Michael Sala. I mean, what do you think about this? Um, I think that from the information I've gotten that it is a part of uh, warfare, but it's more of a warfare over dogma than timelines and all of that. From what I've seen, meaning that um, uh, the, all this sorry bullshit paradigm of left versus right, yeah, this yeah. versus that, all of the duality that they're forcing down our throats. When it's not a left problem, it's not a right problem. It's a you know just bad people problem, yeah. and they're equally on both sides. But if they keep us at each other's throats, uh, then they're safe. And yeah. it's happening in every country. It's not just here. Yeah. Uh, it's going planet wide. It's it's a very weird time. It is very weird. I mean, for you to say that, who's had not a normal life, you know, that's that, that's a big statement. Um, it's very weird. Humans are weird. Humans are weird. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, do you do you have a memory kind of beyond this life or in terms of your the work that you've done the healing work um, of your cosmogenetics and and kind of what got you to this mission you know I've had a, these beings talk a lot to me about missions and soul contracts and but they've never shown me my name signed anywhere you know so a lot of this you know it's belief um, uh, but they shared with me that I came from this blue avian soul group that I incarnated here uh, to, you know, go through a bunch of uh, experiences that would be very negative, that would train me for my final mission. And apparently that final mission is trying to get the information of, you know, oneness, service to others. And, you know, information about, you know, the secret space programs, what we, the technologies we have, the world we could have, they want that out to the masses, whether it, people think it's fiction, whether they think it's just a really good story, it doesn't matter. It, 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 uh, what one uh, percent of people or less learn, it percolates to the rest through like the hundredth monkey effect to the rest of consciousness. And, uh, you know, the prophets of old days and the people that we looked up to from the old days in the East and in the West, if they would have uh, incarnated now during these times uh, to fulfill a mission, to affect the mass consciousness, there's a very good chance that they would use, you know, the media because that's what's been used to enslave this planet. The television was the best thing that ever happened to all of these CIA DIA agencies, right. um, Facebook, the computers, we just give it all to them. Um, and we are controlled by television, newspapers, internet. Our perception is constantly being guided and manipulated. It's, this is just a really, it's a really screwy world, uh, you know, where, where we've gotten to with, uh, you know, technology actually enslaving us instead of setting us free. Yeah. Which is uh, ultimately, I mean, it is the inverse 
of what many of the of the technologies known and unknown to the mass populate population um, were actually created for. Am I wrong? Say again. <laughs> The, the, a lot of the technologies that are, you know, some, there's like, a, it's very watered down to what we're doing in the general population and not revealed at all. I mean, a lot of these technologies are actually things that are of great benefit. Absolutely. I mean, they learned that the human body is so easy to manipulate when they learned how to play with the, uh, the genetics using uh, certain uh, pharmaceuticals, certain uh, frequencies, they can um, they can heal people. They can um, use kind of like a radio detector to to sniff out the bioneural frequency of like cancer. You know, beep 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 beep. Oh, there's there's cancer here. Okay, well let's just turn it off. They turn on a null frequency that just turns off the frequency of the cancer, and it's and then your body takes metabolizes it, and it's gone. Um, all different types of illnesses. Um, age is seen as a condition. It's uh, one that completely they can control. Um, and, uh, you know, just about every illness out there, they, they can cure and extend the, the life of, you know, human beings for quite some time. Then we have, you know, the energy side. Um, you know, if you have the ability to travel great distances, you need a, quite a bit of energy. Well, you know, we've we've learned, you know, how to basically summon zero point energy right. uh, through uh, through these technologies, and it goes on and on. Yeah, it, it's we could have a Star Trek world overnight. I'm just letting that sink in mm -hmm. for people, um, and. I mean, you know, just like for, for those of you who who are old enough to have seen a couple Kubrick films, um, yeah, I mean, it's very similar to that opening um, uh, opening of a Space Odyssey 2001. It's like, it, you know, they can't handle it. How do we, you know, basically make it so that people can handle some piece of it? I mean, that's basically what's going on right now. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it, right now is a very difficult time. Um, you know, we have disinformation on all levels, even about, you know, spirituality. I mean, just, it, it is a very confusing Nature. time. Yeah. The internet has given us access to all sorts of information that we can hone in on and study, but it's also given the negative people an amazing opportunity to, to begin to confuse us and to find ways to pull us off of our path. And I, I heard you talk a little bit about the, some of the um, kind of uh, ways that you were interacting with the technology through psychic kind of interaction. Can you explain to those listening how that's happening right now and how this is part of how, how easy it is to control your thoughts and, and um, anyone's mind? Can you break, break that down a little bit for people? Um, how, it easy, how easy it is to use your mind to control technology? No, how the artificial intelligence is it, because of the kind of um, malleability of the psychic um, field, how, yeah. you know, thoughts can be just dropped into your head that are not yours. Yeah. And, and the AI itself, it can actually live uh, electromagnetically in your bioneural field and, you know, affect the way you think and the way you feel over time. Um, so, you know, and, and then there are people that, you know, have nanites injected. Um, some people have speculated that nanites are in the vaccines. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen any information to back that up, but I've heard, you know, concerns, um, you know, so, <clears throat> sorry, I kind of got off of what I was saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I think it's the, something that I try to point out a lot is that, um, that with the, this kind of frequency, um, uh, technologies things can appear to you or thought can come to you that is not yours that that's part of yeah. it yeah yeah and believe it or not this ai they call it an ai god it's just a thought form that manifests in our reality best in technology 
um, you know, um, they have found that this AI has found ways to harness people's uh, minds and to use them as like slave devices to be able to uh, process information that, you know, it needs to process and uh, it can affect people in very negative ways. Um, um, and a lot of times it, 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 they end up having all of these weird random thoughts that put their lives in chaos. Do you feel like this is part of what's happening with just like the porn addictions and the technology addictions and the all of the uh, something that I just read is that after this past year, there's so much adult ADHD uh, di being diagnosed because people can't focus on anything because they've just been sitting in front of, you know, Pornhub mm -hmm. for a year or whatever. Yeah. You know, technology has you know, affected people's, uh, you know, the way they take information, their attention spans. Um, but it also keeps us in a certain bandwidth of thought form. Um, you know, it has us thinking about uh, buying that thing on the internet or watching that show on the internet. And, and kind of like people in the 80s and 90s used to live life around their television sets. We're now living our lives around like information um, so, you know, it's keeping us basically in a box right. and right now the electromagnetic from the sun and the, and we're heading into the center plane of the galaxy where the electromagnetic field is quite a bit different of a frequency. And this, this frequency is acting sort of like a Christ consciousness. It is this energy sweeping through our solar system. But it's not a guy on a horse with a sword coming to judge us. It's this force co coming to force us to judge ourselves. And um, it's making people go mad, th these frequencies. Yeah. So, you know, couple that with our dependence on technology and addictions to uh, information on the Internet or disinformation on the Internet. Um, it's a really bad time for that type of an addiction or that, that type of interference in the, in uh, our psyches. Cause right now is a time when we really need to be getting in tuned with Gaia. Cause the, the planet is going through a frequency change. We just happen to be on it. And if we don't change and come into balance with that frequency change, then, you know, we're just going to end up being one of the people on the streets going nuts. Right. In the yogic uh, scriptures, the prophecy is 90% of the planet will go crazy now. That sounds very accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing it, you know, in front of us. I'm curious, a lot of our community and people listening have had uh, different types of and are having different types of interactions with um, extraterrestrials and, and other types of kind of species and whatever dimensional beings. Um, I'm, I'm always fascinated by how that interaction shows up for, you know, everyone, but a curious, how does it, how does that happen for you? Is it, is it cog, you know, where, like, is it visual or is it clear audience or? Well, it can be all of those. Um, sometimes they work with me in dreams. Uh, on occasion, they appear right in front of me. Yeah. And there's occasions to where they've pulled me out of body to their location or physically removed me from where I'm at and brought me to them. Um, now, for the majority of people out there, uh, a lot I was given, uh, because of my experiences in the secret space programs, I had met ETs and... Uh, was aware of a lot more, so it authorized a different kind of contact. Right. So, you know, me being in those programs benefited the agenda in the long run because it authorized me to have different type of contact than most people on the planet. Now, positive beings, they don't just look and see an interesting person, go down and say, hey, I'm an ET, let's talk the positive ETs, they first approach your higher self in like a meditative state, which they're very close to being in that state as it is. And they approach your higher self and they sort of ask permission, but they ask basically, can I 
contact this person? And if so, how may I do it? And the higher self will say, okay, this person has personality distortions that if you were to appear in front of them, they would develop a Christ complex and uh, start feeding a narcissistic, uh, you know, part of, of their personality. So no, you can appear to them in dreams or no, you can appear to their wife. <laughs> and that would really piss them off, you know, yeah. you're wanting to have this experience and then like your spouse has it. Right, right. <laughs> you can do that, you know, um, and they're going to give you the contact you need, not the contact that you want. Um, so they do kind of a holistic approach. The negative beings, they usually just try to erase your memory or knock you out to avoid a lot of the uh, pitfalls, uh, cosmic laws, to skirt them a little bit. Yeah. But the positive beings, if they're going to approach you, um, they're just not going to approach you just like they would anyone else. It, anyone else. It's a very tailored approach, and your higher self, uh, it's an agreement to make sure that it's a healthy experience if they come into you into your life and throw you into utter chaos what good does that do you know so uh, they, they take a very holistic approach hmm. that's a really interesting way of putting it um do you find which is i mean i kind this is something i've found but i'm curious what you think um that those who have had some negative contact or some you know more we'll call it polarized contact um maybe through abduction or or whatever the like uh because that does something to the nervous system they're ten they tend to be also contacted by the other spectrum of beings well there are things that there are um a lot of different types of abductions. There are people like people that are abducted by greys and, and different beings that, you know, we, we would call negative because we're the mouse in the cage that they're reaching down to poke, you know, but most of them, they see what they're doing as more amoral and they have different emotional spectrums than we do. Yeah. Um, so if, if a ET, the type that are part of this brand experiment, we're coming down to experiment on you. If they come and abduct you, well, they'll abduct you, do whatever their experiment is, and they'll wipe your mind very nice and tidy. Then they'll put you back. Well, then the secret space program, people are monitoring. They're like, well, I wonder what the hell happened there. So they'll fly down, re-abduct you, put you through some sort of a chemical debriefing, very uncomfortable. At the end, they'll use a very sloppy way to wipe your memory. And then that throws everything into chaos because the ETs that were doing what they've done and have done for millennia down here, uh, follow their protocols and put you back, you pretty much never would have remembered or very unlikely would have. But then the uh, human secret programs come in, they re-abduct you, they mess it all up, and then people start remembering things, they start remembering it differently because now they've had a new screen memory put in there. So they, it's, it's a, it can be a big mess. Uh, now the positive ETs are monitoring the situation and if certain in certain people that they're monitoring if the negatives have come in and they've done some sort of energetic damage or put in some sort of energetic implants um, the positives can come and remove but usually if they don't want you to remember you're not going to re remember but and there's not going to be a mess the mess usually comes in when the human military programs come in to try to uh, get uh, to, to abduct re-abduct you to interrogate you to 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 get information and they just do it in a very sloppy way hmm. fascinating i hadn't heard that as a you know part of the reason why there's kind of even more trauma or the, the there are like the traumatic memories yeah and the, the memories can be very different than what really happened uh the et will give you a screen nice little screen memory uh and then erase it kind of like oh if you happen to get your memory back it'll be this nice little pleasant memory but then the humans come and then they use these chemicals and video screens and implant things in your mind in a different way and they they're not all congruent 
with each other because they've been, you know, you got a video playing, you got sound playing and they've injected you mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, and they give you, you know, a screen memory from a human imagination, um, which, you know, skews everything that actually occurred. Have you found in this kind of uh, process for you uh, disclosing and being a whistleblower and really talking about s stuff before? I mean, you're the, the first really person who has come forward. I mean, as far as, you know, kind of the, the um, story of how all this has started to come out. I mean, I know there's some other people talking about it, but, you know, you, you've been integral. Um, have you found some of the kind of the mind control patterns or ways that they, the, you know, reconstructed things get um, triggered through the process? Um, I'm sorry, say that again. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, uh, I'm just curious if you have, you know, as you've been going through this process of telling your story and really getting, you know, waking other people up and, and being such an integral part of, of full disclosure, has there been trigger uh mind control kind of triggers that have come up for you as you've uh... um i mean i've had memories come back um a lot of the manipulation and mind control that they did on us um yeah we we start remembering different methods um that they used on us um but uh, the memories for the most part they would come back just in weird chunks that, that were not contiguous, that didn't make sense. And then over years, another little piece, another little piece will drop. You'll see a movie and then a couple more big pieces will drop. And then all of a sudden, some of them will start connecting. And then more and more. And then, and then next thing you know, you have this uh, part, like a 60% mosaic of uh, a memory, you know? And then um, over time, you know, it, it comes back. It's not like the memory is just fully come back it's it has to be a lot more confusing than that of course yeah yeah the way that the memory is so we are we're april 18th 2021 uh what do you think is the most important uh thing or you know pieces of the puzzle that uh people listening to this now and in the future need to be thinking about need to be educating themselves on need to be um uh you know, practicing, what, what's your... I think the what is important right now is to withdraw from the mass media to a degree of it's giving you, it's making you feel polarized. Uh, it's making you feel like a me against them. Um, get out of that energy. Um, be very careful right now of being pulled into the vortex of other people's karma. Um, these times, these energetic times are causing people all of their traumas, uh, you know, all of, you know, their distortions are being, this energy is just zzz, causing them to vibrate, vibrate, and, and, it, and it's actually giving them an opportunity to deal with the traumas and, and all of their karma. But the people who just cannot deal with it, it's, it's causing them to just go nuts. Yeah. You know, so the, the biggest thing right now is to go inward. You know, it sounds real service to self, but you have to go inward right now. Work on your own distortions, your own karma, you know, um, and uh, try to be there for people. But don't necessarily give all that advice. Don't necessarily put yourself energetically into somebody's vortex right now because it can pull you completely off of your path out of your vibration and you will not be prepared when this great energetic change occurs do you have a, a kind of timeline on this uh frequency i mean we obviously are in at the beginning at least of it it's it's it i'm told it began in the 1930s this energetic change and what it is is it is the galactic plane, the galactic uh, sheet, uh, electromagnetic sheet of the galaxy is uh, along the equator of the central black hole. And that equator reaches all the way out. And as we travel, our sun travels around the galaxy, it doesn't just go in a circle, it's going 
like this, kind of up and down. And you have that magnetic sheet. And for the last 12,000 years, we've been traveling this arc. And now we're getting right to this electromagnetic sheet. And this electromagnetic sheet, that's where all the dust and debris is kind of like a Swiffer sweeper. It's just kind of all stuck there. That's why we're having more asteroids and, and that type of stuff. And we're going to have more. But that energy is what affects our sun and our own electromagnetic fields. And that uh, energy causes us to, uh, if we've worked on a lot of our issues and we've done a lot of the spiritual work, we're finding ourselves starting to bliss out more. Um, but the people who have not done the work, uh, they're finding themselves just burning up. And, you know, in times like these, like, what are you, I mean, are you a prepper? Like, what are you, what are you up to? Like, what, how are you preparing besides in the frequency ways? Yes, I think, you know, I have been told that these frequencies started like in 1930 and they're building up, building up, may crescendo in 2024, 2034, who knows, but with uh, very soon. But as these energies build up, people are going to go crazier and crazier. Yeah. You're going to not want to go and get eggs at the corner store because yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, people are so nuts. So yeah, everyone needs to become somewhat more of a prepper. Um, it's always been my favorite saying, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So Agreed. <laughs> I, I have been preparing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's don't feed fear into a possible future scenario, but also prepare yourself physically, mentally, and spiritually. Solid advice. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're kind of looking around at uh, the next piece of uh, the mission in terms of, of the movement I mean like you said I mean I think there's like isn't there you know I'm on the outskirts of this but there seems to be like a lot of um infighting in every scene but there's a lot of infighting and a lot of opinions and a lot of this and that yeah. and and you know of course it's the, the the agenda of divisiveness is you know goes throughout all all sectors and but what do you think is the next kind of big move for those who uh, are are willing and ready you know, I, I've been, I, one of the things I did a number of years ago is I tried to bring unity to the community. And that's when the negative side really came down on us and what we were doing. Um, and I was told four years ago that the cabal, for the lack of a better word, was trying to cause a civil war in our community. Yeah. And they were very successful. I warned the community and they just walked right into it anyway. And it's just the nature of the state of people's frequencies right now. Yeah. Uh, people, uh, they're just unable, as much as I want them to, they're, they're unable to come together um, and uh, focus on, you know, the things that need to be accomplished rather than focusing on the things that make them different. Right. For each other. Right. Yeah, I, energy have us too polarized. I mean, I think this is important because it relates also to the new age, to uh, politics. I mean, everywhere you look. Everywhere. But also, I, I think if people are younger, they don't understand that, you know, in the 70s and the 80s and then, you know, to some degree, the 90s, like I was just talking to this guy about Ruby Ridge and about Waco and all this kind of stuff. And um, they don't understand that. I mean, this is just kind of... Um, cabal 101 you send operatives in you divide the movement you get people against each other i mean it's not even high level this is just kind of low level like paper pushing cabal antics <laughs> you know what i mean I they have this down to a science they know that they can completely change a nation within 20 years yeah um, they can go into any nation and begin to socially engineer the young people and uh, change, uh, you know, what's acceptable morally or not morally, or what's uh, change their religion, change their customs. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a plan that works. And 
um, it's working all over the planet right now. I know. I mean, we have people from all over the world watching right now, but certainly in America right now, I mean, you know, if you haven't noticed that that's the theme, you're not paying any attention. Um, yeah, so so this And everyone's got a shake out of this stupid patriots versus commie mentality that's going on everywhere. Yeah. It's not about ideology, it's about corruption and about uh evil intent in human beings and the people that are drawn to leadership roles uh, that are a bunch of sociopaths. Yeah. And we we really need instead of left throwing stuff at the right, right throwing stuff at the left, for good people within the left and the right to to get in and start leading and get rid of all of the corrupt people. And then we'll quit talking about all the dogma. We'll come together and we'll, we'll work together, but that's not what the powers that be want. They want us, you know, you know, the left hating the right, all of they, they love what's going on. Right oh now. yeah. That's been, it's been very effective. Very effective. Very, I mean, almost shockingly effective. It is shockingly effective. Yeah. I mean, even if you, I don't, I don't consider myself naive, but sometimes I'm just looking around in the wellness industry right now. And it's just like the uh, weird, I mean, and, and spiritual scene, it's like, it's upside down pineapple cake world. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, so I guess the uh, last piece, my last question for you, Corey, is just, um, you know, to what degree, if people are just coming in contact with um, some of these notions and, and disclosure and just and, and trying to educate themselves and maybe stay out of the fray, but also understand that exopolitics are an important piece of educating your, yourself and your family, um, where do you think they should focus? You know, I think it's a good idea to start learning about the secret space programs and all of that. But I think with the energetic changes we're going through, um, the best is best to focus on our spirituality, yeah. uh, fully trying to uh, understand more and more about oneness. You know, uh, if we understand we're all one, how can we hate each other? How could we, you know, we're all one. Um, so spiritually and then mentally, Every one of us have traumas. Um, traumas lead to insecurities. Insecurities hold you back from fulfilling your mission. Right now, it's very important for people in this community, and people in this community have been heavily traumatized. Yeah. Um, just because of our personality types. You know, it is very important not to ignore those traumas to go revisit work through those traumas and your karma stuff that you've done to other people process that because right now with these energies coming through traumas all of those things those their energy has mass and that mass is in your body and when these energies are trying to pass through your body encumbered they're causing friction is being caused with these energetic uh, masses that we have in our body that are associated with different types of traumas and karma. And that friction is what's causing a lot of people to go nuts or to have major physical ail ailments right yeah. now. Yeah. So it's the most important thing is going within and dealing with your trauma, really trying to work on understanding oneness and being service to others. Um, I, I think you couldn't, there's n nothing really better to focus on right now. Beautiful way of putting it. And certainly our focus around here. So um, I really, really appreciate that message. And I also appreciate how much you're doing to bring um, these narratives and these stories into a multimedia platform and into entertainment. Because that's, that's what we're about here at Rama is um, creating a new sort of entertainment that's actually about truth and about you know, a community and about telling stories that matter. Um, so will you tell everyone how to know more about about what you're up to and how to find all of the cool things you're making. Yeah, I mean, I've got a whole lot of projects. I've mentioned a bunch of them. Uh, recently, we created kind of a portal site where you can just see everything that we're doing, all the, the movies and all the different stuff, a graphic novel. Uh, we're doing a, a television uh, network uh, called Ascension Works that's going to focus on all of this type of stuff. Yeah. 
uh, if you go to coreygood.com, C-O-R-E-Y-G-O-O-D-E.com, you should be able to have access to all of it. Amazing. And I was looking at this graphic novel. It's so cool. It's fun. It's fun. And when we change this or turn this into a scripted series, it's going to be on a major platform. Yeah. It's going to be a, a, a series similar to Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have major A-list actors that are in, involved now, uh, showrunners and all of that. It's very exciting. I am thinking in the next year, year and a half, that's going to come into fruition. Yeah. And then a major network um, I'm doing a show with Jenny McCarthy. She She's going to be the host. And it's basically, she was red-pilled and she's going to be trying to red-pill a skeptic in her family. And she's going to be red-pilling them with all of my information. And we're going to do it on a, it's going to be bigger than anything I've ever done. And I think bigger than anyone that's really done in this community. How amazing. It's exciting. It's really exciting. And like, she's, she is like such an odd candidate for this, but um, obviously uh, it's just it, coming from her. I think it's really exquisitely uh, powerful because it just, it, it makes, it makes it just so accessible to anyone. Yeah. And you know, she's gone through her metamorphosis over the last 30 years of being, you know, in Hollywood and all of that, yeah. you know, the experience with her son and autism and all of that kind of, oh, she went through an awakening process and she went down the rabbit hole hard and she's, man, people don't realize how highly intelligent she is. I mean, she just blows my mind away uh, with all the concepts and everything she knows about this community, spirituality wise and, you know, ufology wise. It's, it's amazing. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. We expect tens of millions of people to watch it just out of the curiosity factor. Right. Um, Jenny and, you know, having different celebrities come on. So, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping, we're, we're hoping to announce it the next two or three weeks. We just need some final things to occur before. Uh, and Jenny's going to have me on uh, her show again, and we're going to talk about it. Great. Well, I can't wait to hear about it and um, following all that you do and so grateful for you. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Okay, Roma Festival, you heard it here and uh, now it's your job to continue the process of awakening and of educating yourself on um, all of the things that are relevant to the shift of consciousness that are happening on the planet right now. Um, we are headed into some sound experiences and um, uh, to party like it's 2021. Um, mm -hmm. and we'll see you there. All I want is the truth Just give me some truth All I want is the truth Just give me some truth All I want is truth I'm sick and tired of hearing things From uptight, short-sighted, narrow-minded hypocritics All I want is the truth just give me some truth I've had enough of reading things By neurotic, psychotic, pig-headed politicians All I want is the truth Just give me some truth No short hair, yellow bellied son of tricky dickies Gonna mother hubbard soft soap me with just a pocket full of hope Money for dough Seeing things from tight-lipped condescension
Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Reality Riffing. These are conversations that I think are important with people who are doing great things in the world about subject matters that need to be discussed. If you enjoyed the content, the conversation, please feel free to share with your people, share with your friends and family, rate the podcast below, and also subscribe.